Yeah. No, I won't. Hello, how are you doing? Thank you everyone for being here. This is the Executive Nom Noms Committee and we're calling the meeting to order. I apologize for being a little bit late tonight, but if, most of you know, we just came right from the floor to here and we'll go right back to the floor from here. So, um, but thank you all for being here tonight. I hope you've had some time to enjoy the beautiful city of Annapolis. If, um, if you have family or friends with you to support you tonight, please feel free to introduce them when you come to the microphone and your, your senators will be introducing each of you. And I'm going to start tonight with a special request. Um, Senator Kathy Klassmeyer, if you would introduce your um, your nominee, Mr. Michael Thomas, for the Real Estate Commission. He's, I'll just send you the message. He's not. Who? Mr. Montgomery. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Really? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. President. And thank you, um, uh, committee members. Michael, you can come up here. Thank you, Madam. Anyway, um, I, I said I have met Michael for the first time tonight, but after reading his resume and hearing uh, he is a real estate agent and how well he does with his real estate. But again, further than that, he teaches at Morgan uh, University. Um, and he also he's a very collaborative kind of a guy, and uh, I think he's very well suited for the real estate commission. But the best part about him is his birthday is the same as mine. So <laughs> how can he miss? Perfect. It's perfect. Good evening, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, members of the executive committee. I'd like to thank my wife and son for being here with me today. I would like to also thank Governor Wes Moore for trusting me with such an important position. And thank you, um, Senator Claus Meyer, for a great introduction. My name is Michael Thomas. I'm a native Baltimorean and current resident of Baltimore County. I'm a proud alumni of Morgan State University. And as an adjunct professor at Morgan State University, one of the courses I teach is principles and practices of real estate. I enjoy lecturing about real estate and related topics. Also, as a former Housing and Community Development Fellow in Baltimore County, I led, developed, and executed housing programs. Also worked with a diverse group of partners, including county members, churches, nonprofits, and local governments. As a realtor, I executed many complex transactions. I also implemented strategies to build and maintain value in communities through home ownership opportunities. I demonstrated my fiduciary responsibility to provide care, loyalty, good faith, confidentiality, prudence, and disclosure to my clients. As a member of the Maryland Real Estate Commission, I will work in my best, I will work in the best interest of the public to ensure that real estate transactions are honest, fair, and conducted professionally. Thank you for your consideration. Okay. Um, Mr. Thomas, thank you for being here and thank you for your work at Morgan. They're, I think that's they're doing just a terrific job in the business fields, and I really appreciate you being there. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Thomas? Anyone else? Thank you very much. I'm sorry that you had to wait a little bit for us tonight. No problem. Thank, thank you. you. Um, and next, I'm going to ask for um, Senator Karen Lewis Young to bring Kelly Russell because Kelly has a long drive back home, I understand. So thank you. She does. Thank you very much. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to introduce Alderman Kelly Russell. And I do know her. I know her well. I have known her for 14 years. We served together on the City of Frederick Board of Aldermen from 2009 through 2013. So I can tell you firsthand, she is a hard worker. She shows attention to detail, and she is passionate about the issues. And in fact, today, she is my go-to person for everything in the city of Frederick. I would read you a list of her community service endeavors, but we wouldn't make it back on the floor by 7 o'clock tonight. So I'm going to ask you to trust me on that. 
But uh, I do want to share with you something about her law enforcement experience because she is a candidate for the Commission on Correctional Standards. She is a graduate of the 25th Frederick Police Academy, and she served as a sworn officer for 22 years with the Frederick Police Department. She served in the Traffic Bureau and was promoted to sergeant in 1988, becoming the first woman to serve as assistant commander of special operations. She also served as supervisor in the Criminal Investigations Division, Community Services Division, and Patrol. She was promoted to the rank of lieutenant in 1996, only the third woman to achieve that rank and retired as commander of the Human Resources Division in June of 2005. This is currently her fourth term on the City of Frederick Board of Aldermen. And I can't say enough about how highly I recommend her and how fortunate we will be for her additional service. Thank, thank you, thank Senator. You. I neglected to say that... Um, you, um, Ms. Russell's being nominated for the Correctional Standards Commission. So thank you. Correct. And um, Kelly, would you like to say a few words? Good evening. Thank you, Senator, for that very generous and embarrassing um, introduction. <laughs> um, thank you, Chair Vidal and members of the committee for uh, this opportunity. My name is Kelly Russell. I'm honored to be considered for this appointment. I'm a lifelong resident of this great state of Maryland. I grew up in Rockville and I graduated from Thomas Wooten High School. After attending Shepherd College in the University of Maryland for a time, I moved to Frederick to pursue a career in law enforcement, as you've heard. Um, after serving with the Frederick Police Department for 22 years, I retired and returned to them as a civilian employee. I continued in that position until 2009 when I ran successfully for the Board of Aldermen in Frederick, and as mentioned, I'm in my fourth term. Over the 40 years I've served in law enforcement and government, I've seen much evolution. From street cop to commander of human resources, I have been on the front lines. I've worked diligently throughout my career to learn from our history and to support efforts toward more enlightened policing, driven by community relationships and problem solving. I understand that while we have made some progress to ameliorate issues within our systems, we still have much work to do. If we are to ensure equity and help people who have struggled within the system to become full participants in their best life possible, we must ensure our justice system is not an obstruction, but rather an opportunity to provide the best conditions and tools for those in the system to be a part of their community. I've been privileged to serve. Truth be told, my life before policing was a little wayward. I didn't finish college. I ended up homeless for a time and I had some struggles. I was fortunate and blessed to find some people, some mentors to guide me and get me back on the right track. I could have gone down a very different road. I know I was given a second chance and I truly believe that every person deserves that opportunity. If you think that my life experiences could provide a valuable perspective to benefit the work of the commission, I would be proud to serve. I thank you for your time and for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Russell. Thanks for sharing your story. Are there any questions for Ms. Senator Croza? Thanks, I'll be very brief. Um, and thank you, Ms. Russell, for your willingness to serve and your background. Just a quick question, uh, because I believe this is a really important commission on correctional standards. Just do you, what do you expect to accomplish do you, um, by serving? Is there something specifically that attracted you to this appointment? I would say this is this is a little bit out of my uh, out of my realm and comfort zone. So for me, it's a learning opportunity to see a different side of the system that I that I was a part of, and to hopefully uh, enable an, an enlightened uh, opportunity to work with our corrections institutes to make sure that they are providing uh, the services and the conditions that are conducive to people to to have a better life. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much, Ms. Russell. Thank you. Um, so we're going to go back to the beginning. And President Ferguson, would you like to introduce Linda Perry for Automobile Insurance Fund Board of Trustees? Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, members of the Executive Nominations Committee. It is my uh, true pleasure to introduce Linda Perry, who um, 
is a phenomenal representative for the MAFE board, not only because she served on the board previously and will be returning back home to it to be uh, give a policy and oversight view, but um, while she is in the midst of still being a 46th district resident, she is actually um, moving to Laurel and so will be going to be moving into the chairwoman's uh, district. So she has the good sense to, to you know, follow uh, on the uh, appointment night to be moving into the chairwoman's district. But um, in, in all seriousness, uh, she is a phenomenal professional. I'd encourage everyone to take a look at her professional business, uh, the, her, the organization that she started, United Medical Care, which helps navigate elder care, nursing home, and senior care. And she has been a guide to many. It was a company that started as one with one client. And now she has a staff of over 70. Is that correct? Um, has built an incredible business, uh, really providing a true value to people in need. And so uh, without further ado, I have my strong endorsement and I would like the committee to move forward with uh, Ms. Linda Perry. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, first, um, good evening. I would like to thank the executive committee as well as uh, Governor Westmore for this nomination and the MAFE board for allowing me the privilege of being considered to serve for the second time on this council. Um, I remain fully committed to the mission of MAFE, which is instrumental in providing seamlessly un uninsured, I'm sorry, uninsurable with the access to cover in our great state. When I was appointed to the MAFE board, I'm gonna not read this. When I was appointed to the May Board the first time, um, I was very young. I was in my early 30s and I just started my company and I was doing it all in my company. And I have this love for the underprivileged and making sure that their lives are easier and making sure that they can do the things that we take for granted. And the May Board and with the May what the MAFE company does is making sure that the uninsurable have insurance and dealing with both clients that are underprivileged as well as caregivers that are low income, um, because my niche market is making sure that people don't have to pay for home care, that we get people that can't afford to pay for someone to stay in their homes to actually stay and thrive and live. Um, and a lot of the times they can't afford to pay out of pocket. So let's make sure that they stay in their homes through all of these wonderful programs that the state of Maryland has. And one of the major things that MAFE does is making sure that they can drive. And so a lot of my clients, a lot of my caregivers are on MAFE because a lot of the uh, credit ratings make them uninsurable. And so MAFE definitely has come to play even in my own day-to-day um, -day life dealing with my caregivers and my employees. So it matters so much to me. This reappointment and my initial appointment mattered a lot too. So I just wanna thank you for consideration. Thank you, Ms. Perry, and welcome to District 32. You need to reach out and let me know when you get there and get settled. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Do I have any questions at all for Ms. Perry? Thank you very much for serving. Oh, I'm sorry. The vice, I'm, I'm so the, close. the vice chair has a question. No, Madam Chair, I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to second the nomination of president. I've known Linda for a long time, and she's one of those people who are definitely a giver. Um, and, you know, uh, Baltimore's loss is def truly um, your gain as she's an active member. Well, of I'm still going to be active in my Baltimore. I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I second the nomination. Thank you. Seeing no other questions. Um, Senator Hester, are you here? I've seen you, thank you. Um, for Lonnie R. Robbins, also Automobile Insurance Fund Board of Trustees. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, for the record, I'm Senator Katie Fry Hester, a proud to represent District 9. And tonight I'm here honored to introduce Lonnie Robbins, uh, who has been nominated for a third term to the Maryland Automobile Insurance Funds Board of Trustees, where he has served as chair since 2013. Lonnie has a long history of public service in the transportation sector, dating back to the 1970s when he began his career as a planner for the Department of Transportation. Since then, he's worked in the governor's office, the Department of General Services, and most recently for Howard County's local government through six administrations. I'm extremely grateful to his service in Howard County from which he retired a few weeks ago, and, and he has our strong endorsement for this reappointment. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Hester, for that great introduction. 
Um, my name is Lonnie Robinson. Good evening, um, Chairman Vidal and also um, Vice Chair Hayes. I'd like to thank Governor Moore and Secretary Everts for my reappointment to the Maryland Automobile Insurance Fund Board of Trustees. I'm currently serving as a chairman of the Maryland Auto Insurance uh, Board, and I found this experience very rewarding. Um, I just retired from Howard County government after 34 years of service with them and the last 16 as the chief administrative officer for Howard County. I feel that that experience has been a very valuable asset um, as I take it on duties uh, on the Maryland Automobile Insurance Fund Board. I'd like to take this moment just to introduce my wife who's been a very supportive um, spouse during all this time, April. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for consideration. And I hope that I can garner your support for this reappointment. And I look forward to, if I'm confirmed, to serving the citizens of Howard County and Governor Moore's administration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robbins. Do I have any questions from anyone on the committee? No. Senator Lamb. Lear. Senator Lamb, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to second uh, Mr. Robbins' nomination. He's been a long-serving public servant in Howard County, many, many years, just recently retired, but glad to see him being able to continue his public service on the MAFE board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. That completes the Automobile Insurance Fund Board of Trustees, so you all don't need to hang around if you don't want to. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, next, we're going to go to the Correctional Standards Commission again and um, ask that Senator Lamb, will you pre present Yolanda Berthea? Berthea. So, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, uh, for the record, Clarence Lamb, Senator District 12, here to present um, Yolanda Bathia for the Commission on Correctional Standards. Um, she has a significant history with our state correction system that I believe will be really valuable, ensuring that our state prisons and home detention agencies are operating in an evidence-based manner to ensure public safety and rehabilitation. She served as the Executive Officer for the Institutional Corrections and Community Correction for Northern uh, for the Northern Region. She's also directly overseen the state parole and probation programs in Garrett, um, Allegheny, Washington, Frederick, Montgomery, Carroll, Howard, Harford, and Cecil Counties, as well as six state correctional institutions. She served previously as the Deputy Associate Director for Court Services and the Offender Supervision Agency in D.C., and she's been responsible for significant management oversight, including a $4.2 million operating budget. I truly believe her experience and expertise will be a great asset to our Commission on Correctional Standards, and really pleased to be able to present Ms. Uh, Bathia to all of you. Good evening, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, our Executive Committee. Good evening to you, Senator Lamb, and to Governor uh, Westmore. I really appreciate this opportunity uh, for this consideration or his nomination for this appointment for the Commission on Correctional Standards. Uh, as it has been read, I am a, a, a um, community corrections professional. Uh, it is my passion. It is what I would do for free. Um, I am uh, committed to evidence-based uh, practices, and I am committed to uh, the overall um, providing oversight for the overall general conditions uh, for those who are under uh, our custody and, uh, and making sure that uh, their quality of life while they are incarcerated are appropriate. I'm also um, in very interested in the reason why I wanted to join uh, this particular team is because I was attracted to Governor Westmore's uh, policy on uh, criminal justice reform, particularly in that in community supervision, parole, and probation. So I thank you for this consideration, and I would be a great asset to your team, and I look forward to uh, the completion of this nomination. Thank you very much, Ms. Bethia. Any, any other questions? Thank you for your service. Um, I'm going to announce Ms. April Cockrell because unfortunately Senator James is not well tonight. So April, are you here? Will you come up to the podium, please? Um, thank you very much. So I have a letter here from a, a lovely letter from your Senator. I'm sorry that she couldn't be here to share this with you. But for the past six years, uh, Ms. Cockrell has been the human services program manager for the Baltimore County Police Department where she, among many other important functions, develops, directs, and evaluates programs for youth and community services. 
This includes public and in-service educational and preventative programs, preparing grant proposals and coordinating with other jurisdictions to generate one cohesive social services enterprise. April also concurrently works at MedStar Harbor Hospital as a behavioral health specialist who evaluates patients presenting with psychotic illnesses. She is a licensed certified social worker, clinical, we all know that now in finance, LCSWC, um, with the Maryland Board of Social Work approved supervisor and a board member of the Maryland Board of Social Work examiners. So thank you for your service and for your great experience that you'll bring to the correctional standards. Okay, and good evening. I really feel like I don't have to say anything much about myself. Um, <laughs> um, but good evening. My name is April Cockrell and I'd like to thank Governor Moore, um, Senator James and the executive committee for your consideration. Um, I would also like to thank my Uber, my father, Charles Cockrell, who is actually here in the building. He feels like he needs to stand up. Um, as, as stated, I am um, currently a social work supervisor for Baltimore County Police. I've been there for the past six years. Um, and I am also an outgoing member of the State of Maryland Social Work Board. Um, I believe that my background in various human services facilities will allow me to continue to proudly serve Harford County and the entire state of Maryland. And I would like to thank the board for this opportunity and the consideration. Thank you very much. Do I have any questions for Ms. Cockrell? Got off easy. Thank you. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you. Um, next, Senator Jennings. Are you here? Senator Jennings here. Okay, is um, Lakia James here? You want to come up? What page is she on? Would you give me just a second? I'm going to introduce you. I just need to find page 19. So, yeah, I got it. So, thank you, Ms. James, for being here. Um, I want to just introduce Ms. Lakia James as she's a correctional officer too, an institutional training specialist, um, and has years of experience in coordinating the logistics of training, including guiding and recommending curriculum improvements, dependable and resourceful using technology to provide training to staff throughout the central region. So it sounds like you bring a lot of experience to this Correctional Standards Commission, and we appreciate you being here tonight. Hello, I'm Corporal James, Lakia James, I'm sorry. Um, I had 15 years as a correctional officer in the central region area. I am currently the institutional trainer for my institution. I keep up with compliance for the jails um, and I'm just trying to explore a different area in public safety. Um, that's it. Thank you. Do you have any questions? No. Senator Cruz, you have a question? Uh, Corporal James, first of all, I want to thank you for your service. I work with some of the correctional officers at Eastern uh, Correctional Institution on the shore. And one challenge we have is, as I think you know, is recruitment and retention. Right. And given your, you know, your experience and now coming uh, to the commission, do you, do you uh, care to comment on, on where your field is going? Um, I feel like it is getting a little better. Uh, I think we could work on as far as getting recruiting people, uh, making the process a little more, like paying attention more to the process of hiring and getting people to stay, letting them see the institution before they go to the academy and stuff like that. Other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, Senator Griffith, thank you. Would you like to introduce N Niani Smith? It's the last nominee for the Correctional Standards Commission. Thank you, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. President, colleagues. And Madam Chair, I'm quite impressed. I had to ask her how to pronounce her name and you nailed it. It's my pleasure to introduce you all to Niani Smith, who is a resident of the fabulous District 25. I'm pleased to introduce her. She has a background in social work as well. 
As a matter of fact, for those of you on finance, she has all the licenses. She has an LICSW from DC, a LCSWC in Maryland. She has really an impressive resume, got her Bachelor of Science in Religion and a Bachelor of Science in Human Services from Lincoln University, where she graduated cum laude. She has a Master of Social Work Clinical from the University of Maryland at Baltimore and a Doctorate of Social Work from the University of Southern California. In addition to her academic and professional accomplishments, and I'm sure we all have her resume and the packets in front of us, she's active in her church where she serves as an elder. She participates in community events like food giveaways, and, and she enjoys spending time with family, which is also one of my favorite things to do. So it's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Smith, who is here for a nomination to the Commission on Correctional Standards. Thank you, Senator Griffith. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you to the governor for the nomination and for all those who are assembled here. Thank you so much. I believe that my educational and professional experiences in compliance, assessment, program evaluation, and sustainability will support the mission of the Commission on Correctional Standards if confirmed. I thank you all for your time. Ms. Smith, thank you. Do I have any questions for Ms. Smith? You're just bringing incredible background and education to the commission, and I'm really pleased that you're going to be serving. Thank, Thank you. you. I see my police chief here, and I'm sure she has um, some extra some to get back to. And well, Senator Griffith, if you don't mind, Chair Griffith, while you're up, will you introduce Chief Amala Wad for the Police Training and Standards Commission? I would be happy to, and it is my pleasure to introduce the chief to those of you that haven't had the pleasure of meeting her. I actually met her some years ago in Prince George's County and have just been so impressed as her star has riv risen across the state and share her with, with your county, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm introducing her to those that are not familiar. Uh, Amala Wad is nominee for the Maryland Police Training and Standards Commission. She's had a remarkable career in police work that spans more than 30 years. She began her career in Hyattsville as a Prince George's County Police Department patrol officer, and she really enjoyed working with the community. While in Prince George's County, she also served as the commander at District 2, Bowie Station. She was an administrative officer, an executive officer for the Office of Chief of Police, and she retired as a major in July of 2013. Since then, she went on to become the first woman, first person of color, first member of the LGBTQ community to be appointed to serve as chief of police in Anne Arundel County. Chief Awad values community and understands that strong relationships and mutual trust between the police and community are critical to public safety. It was hard to find, even though I've met her before, it was hard to find what she enjoyed outside of work. I think she actually actually loves her work, but I finally pried away from her that she loves spending time with her wife and adorable grandchildren, our grandchild and her family. So it's my pleasure to introduce the chief to you all this evening. Thank you, Senator. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Senator. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, Senate President, um, and this esteemed uh, executive nomination committee. Um, I thank Governor uh, Westmore for the nomination. Um, it's an honor to have been or to be considered. Um, as you've heard uh, my senator say, um, community policing is something very close to my heart. And I don't like reducing it to those two words. Um, I pride myself on building relationships with folks. Um, I think that some of us sometimes miss the mark um, where fostering those relationships um, helps us both, uh, particularly, um, you know, in the, the most recent years uh, with regard to policing and the community, uh, so much so that when I arrived here in Anne Arundel County, um, one of the first things I did was create a Bureau of Community Services. Um, I elevated that, that particular unit to a bureau because in my opinion, it carried as much weight as our Bureau of Patrol operations and administration. And the focus quite frankly um, is community. 
Um, having served as the former president for the Prince George's County Police Chiefs Association, I previously held a position with the Maryland Police Training and Standards Commission. Um, it was a very short-lived opportunity because I got tapped here in Anne Arundel to serve as um, Chief of Police. And this has been my highest honor. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to return to the commission's work. I understand how critical, particularly in these moments, um, that role is. And I, I know that I will bring, bring uh, my best um, diversity of thought to the table um, with my peers. So I appreciate the opportunity to be considered. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. I want to second your nomination. And Senator Augustine, I'll get to you just in a, in a moment, please. But um, I'm just so proud of our chief. Not only does the community love her, the police officers love her. So you're just doing a great job keeping everybody happy, communicating. And I think we have the best training in, in the state. And I appreciate that you're going to take your time to serve on the Police Training and Standards Commission again, Chief. Thank you. Senator Augustine. Thank you, Madam Chair. I mean, I'm I'm obviously similarly supportive of the of Chief and still very hurt that she left us. But <laughs> but but she's just such a, a, a wonderful public servant. And so I just am really very pleased to be supportive of this. Thank you, Senator. And I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Thank you, Chief. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I don't see any other questions. Thank you. Um, so now we're going to do the Correctional Training Commission. And um, Senator Hellerman, are you here? I'm going to ask you to do all three of yours. Um, if I can say this right, Hyanna Baronet, Rhonda Johnson, and Wallace Norman. So you have three of the Correctional Training Commission members. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. President, members of the committee. I'm Shelley Hedelman, Senator from District 11, and I'm very pleased to introduce my constituents today. They, the three that were mentioned are all for the Correctional Training Commission. Um, Ms. Hyanna Barnett is a correctional officer professional with over 10 years of experience. She was recently promoted to be a correctional office lieutenant. She served at MCI and Jessup for about eight years before moving to the commissioner's office. She works as a supervisor and provides field training for new officers. She conducts department in-service training and is focused on traffic department, which means accounting for inmates that are in different facilities. She's a certified trainer, field training officer, crisis escalation officer, and sexual harassment instructor. And she was trained by the very commission she's hoping to join. So without further ado, introduce Ms. Hyanna Barnett. Um, hello, and thank y'all for considering me for the position. Um, it was presented to me by one of my commissioners that the seat was looking to be filled and I would be perfect for it. Because um, some of my focus, well, main focus is training and retraining, because a lot of times when we fail at something, it falls back to where we lacked in training. So that's what I like to focus on when I'm dealing with my direct um, employees in the traffic departments. If they're not doing something right, I always, that's the first thing I offer is to retrain. And then I look at what we are already currently doing and notice just because we're doing it doesn't mean that we should continue. Maybe we do need to make adjustments so we can be more successful at it. So that's um, kind of like my, my niche <laughs> where I found myself because that's this is my going on my 11th year and then after you know just doing the same thing I just I continue to learn I'm reading all the time and just seeing where I could put myself and get a deeper vision of the whole department and what I could give to it so being on the training commission that would just that would be a new thing for me and I'm sure I would learn a whole lot more that I can give out to my current staff that I oversee now. Lieutenant Barnett, thank you for being here. And thank you for your service. 11 years, that's that's yes. quite a career. So thank you. Yes. Do I have any other questions for Ms. Barnett? Thank you very much. We'll look forward to your service. Oh, yes. Senator Croson, I'm thank sorry. Thank you. Yes. Very briefly. Thank you for your service. Since you're hitting the 10-year mark uh, with corrections, it seems to me what I hear from some of the correctional officers is when they hit about you know, that 10 to 15-year mark, what can you do to make sure that we have that institutional experience, but then sometimes they're, how do, how do we, what incentives do we need to do to keep them to, the experience to stay? 
Um, what I like to do when I'm speaking to some of the staff and they do feel a little complacent and feel like what else is there for, for them to do, I just show them all the opportunities that Corrections does have to offer. So if you're tired of doing one thing, learn something different and see where, you know, find your niche and see what you can offer to the, to the department before you think there's nothing left for you to do and you just want to leave. So I just like to expose them to all the opportunities that are there that a lot of times that I didn't even know that was there until you actually start looking into different things and then go for it. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. I would like to introduce uh, Rhonda Johnson. She is the Institutional Training Coordinator at Baltimore Central Booking Intake Center. She supervises and trains other instructors on meeting the goal of the in-service training department core curriculum, and she's a correctional officer sergeant. She also works as the advanced lead level in the custody, security, and supervision of adults who are incarcerated. To help make changes in corrections, she likes to let coworkers know about the importance of being trained. Um, she likes keeping the doors open, communicating. She always is looking out to help people. People come to her to talk, and it sounds like she's a good source of advice. She's really excited about the opportunity to help out. She's a certified correctional academic instructor. She's active in her church as an associate minister and is just looking for ways to help out. So I'd like to introduce um, Sergeant Rhonda Johnson. Good evening, Madam President, Vice President, and all of you who are here. Um, my name is Sergeant Rhonda Johnson. Um, I wanna thank Senator for that lovely introduction. I am the Institutional Training Coordinator. I have more than 10 years at Central Book and Alone. I did start my training in correction, not training, but in corrections back in 05 at the former Baltimore City Detention Center. I've seen a lot. I've worked housing units. I've so far coming up through the rank. I still inspire to be a lieutenant and prayerfully warden before I finally retire. So with that being said, uh, I do have the ear of a lot of people. I have the ear of medical staff. I have the ear of case managers, um, mental health, because you have to one, present yourself friendly in order for people to talk to you, to open up, to get the real and the truth of what is actually going on within our facilities. I am one that say, if you don't really wanna know the truth, don't ask me because I'm gonna tell you what it is. You might not like the answer, but I'm gonna give you what it is. And in order to solve any issue, problem, situation, we have to be honest with what's really going on. Thank you for your service. Do I have any questions at all for Sergeant Johnson? Thank you very much. 17 years, right? Well, yes. <laughs> Once you add them all together. Once yes. you add them all together. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, since 2010, Mr. Norman has been the Executive Director of Residential Operations for seven state-owned and operated residential facilities for youth who are detained pending adjudication before the court. He began his career as a military policeman in the U.S. Navy and went to work for the Department of Juvenile Services in Georgia back in 1996. He moved to Baltimore in 2006 and has been working at DJS as an assistant facility administrator and has worked his way up there for the past 17 years. He's been in this uh, area of um, this profession for 25 plus years and um, certainly brings a lot of experience and insight. So I welcome and introduce you to Mr. Wallace Norman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Good evening, board, Madam Chair, uh, Senator President. My name is Wallace Norman. I serve currently as the Deputy Secretary of Operations for the Department of Juvenile Services. I've uh, served in that position for the last eight years. Uh, previously, before that, well, let me start with in 2005, I came to the state of Maryland from Georgia as the Assistant Superintendent at the Charles H. Hickey School was promoted up from superintendent of various facilities throughout the state, all the way up to my current position as the deputy secretary of operations. Um, so I also retired from the military of 22 years. I did two tours in Iraq uh, and I'm, 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 I'm completely here to serve the people of, of Maryland, the staff of Maryland and the youth of Maryland. So I'm committed to that word service. 
committed to that word of service. And training, this training commissions, I've been a part of the training commission since 2010. Since 2010, I was a part of the training commission. I've seen several uh, uh, department heads of that chair change over from uh, Secretary Moyer to uh, Commissioner Green. And so I've been a part of that committee for a long standing period. I've seen a lot of work go into that committee, a lot of standards being reformed, a lot of efforts of retention and, and sharing of information, which is vital across agencies. Uh, with that being said, I'm, I'm pleased to be here, and pleased for the reappointments consideration. Thank you, Mr. Norman. Do I have any questions? Senator Croza. Um, Mr. Norman, thank you for your service, your military service, your law enforcement service, and your current service. Um, and I think you would be a good person to ask how you balance the safety and security of both the uh, staff and the um, clients. Well, the first thing is to be fair, firm, and consistent. I heard a young lady here, uh, the previous uh, person say, listen, we have to listen. We have to listen and be coaches and mentors in that li listening process and implement strategies that's going to improve the conditions of confinement for the, the, the offenders as well as those conditions of workforce, uh, improve the workforce development strategies, as well as that communication to that workforce. So oftentimes there's a lack of communication that breaks down the, uh, the clause, the judgment of officers. So therefore training, training, training is the response and ongoing training. I think that we, need to sometimes make sure that the safety of the staff is also that's balanced out with other. Yes, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Um, when I first got into this line of work, I was a, what they call a basic juvenile correction officer for eight years. For eight years, I heard uh, staff, I heard uh, concerns from, from youth and tying both of those concerns back made me want to elevate in this business that I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. So accountability is, is huge on both spectrums and holding accountability to, to the level of uh, restoration and restoring. That's for staff as well as youth in certain situations. So I believe in restoring the behaviors, restoring the individual for permanent success. Thank you. Any other questions for, for Mr. Norman? No? Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Yes, ma'am. You, you as well. Um, Senator McCray, would you like to introduce Fatima Mobley? Uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. President, I get the proud honor to be able to introduce Ms. Fatima Mobley. Um, it looks like Ms. Fatima Mobley is East Baltimore through and through. I saw that she graduated from NAF, uh, National Academy Foundation right there in the heart of East Baltimore. Also, as such as myself, an alumni of Baltimore City Community College. Currently, she serves in the uh, Department of Public Safety as an ADA coordinator, compliance coordinator, but most importantly, she also works as a victim advocate uh, in reference to one of our shelters. So I say thank you, thank you, thank Thank you for your leadership, uh, Ms. Mobley. And Madam Chair, I hope that we will support her nomination. Hello. I'm nervous, but I'm honored <laughs> to be here. My name is uh, Lieutenant Fatima Mobley. I was recently promoted a year ago to Lieutenant. Um, I have nine years of service. I'll be 10 years on, in a month. Um, since I've been a correctional officer, I accomplished a lot. Um, I was in the audit department for six years where I ensured that the jail was in compliance with COMA, um, Maryland Correctional Standard Regulations, um, health and safety issues were up to code. I also work now as the ECSO where I'm responsible for the safety and the sanitation and the sanitary conditions of the prison. Um, I also, I'm responsible for fire and safety as well. I, I'm also the LGBTI liaison at my institution. I think I have my most pride in that area because I accomplished a lot with making sure that we were inclusive with those individuals, training staff on how to handle and deal with that population because it is quite challenging and it's kind of hard placing a person who identifies as female in a male's institution. So that's um, my biggest accomplishment, I would say, to date. Um, 
to be to serve on the training committee is very important to me because I want to ensure that training is innovative, is diverse and inclusive, is informative, and that it's a reflection of today's society. A lot of things that we're doing is kind of outdated. It's not a reflection of what it should be. And in the state of Maryland, I want to make sure that we are leading the pack and not falling and falling behind. Um, that's all I have. That's a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Do, do I have any questions at all for Ms. Mobley? Thank you very much. Very interesting. Thank, Thank you. you. You all have a good one. Um, Finally, for this group of, of the uh, Correctional Training Commission, um, Senator Watson, would you like to introduce this? Now, this is my challenge for the night. Aodel Okunoran. See how I did. <laughs> Aodele Okunoran. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, Mr. President. Uh, for the record, I am Senator Ron Watson from the 23rd District, but I'm proud to uh, introduce uh, a resident of the 23rd District, Mr. Okanuran. Uh, Mr. Okanuran completed his education at Ladoki Akintola University of Technology in Nigeria. He is a certified Maryland Correctional Officer too, and has been working at the Maryland Correctional Institute of Women in Jessup for over 13 years. His experience is very diverse from supervision to transportation incident reports and emergency assistance. He currently has a role of field training officer in addition to being a labor representative. I'm proud to introduce and hope you'll have his support, Mr. Okanoran. Thank you, sir. Thank you everyone. Uh, my name is Aodele Okanoran. First and foremost, I would like to thank the governor for this opportunity to serve and also um, thank my local president, uh, Council 3, Mr. Patrick Moran, also my president for local 13, um, 78, Mr. Olani. Um, that being said, you know, uh, my name again is Aodele Okunoran. I've been a correctional officer for, for the past 13 years, uh, being an active member in my institution. I'm the vice president of um, labor, uh, for my institution, I'm member of the um, staffing analysis for the state of Maryland um, in 2019 and as well as 2022. Um, I'm also advocate for the image pop uh, population in my institution as well as um, the staff as well. I advocate on behalf of staff along with the, um, the image population in terms of need that may arise, I take it to the labor um, management uh, committee that we, we do have in the institution. It, um, it's been a great honor, you know, for me as a correctional officer uh, doing this for a while. Um, the experience is dear, you know, I've, you know, just like I said, I've been doing it for quite over a decade now, and I've I have the opportunity to visit all the state facility um, in 2019, 2022. Um, you know, we just recently uh, completed the recommendation in terms of the need for staff. And I also felt like the experience that I have, I can add it to the success of this committee under the um, training commission as well. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have any other questions for this nominee? No, thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Senator McCray, would you like to come back to the podium and introduce Tara Barnes for the Commission on Judicial Disabilities? Thank, thank you. Thank you again, uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. President, members of the committee. I get the distinct honor once again to introduce Ms. Tara Barnes um, in, to the, in reference to the Commission on Judicial Disabilities. Colleagues, uh, when I think about Ms. Tara Barnes, I think about the uh, her coming to Maryland and graduating from Morgan State University, graduating from the University of Maryland and serving through and through and through continuously throughout our community, whether it's the Baltimore City Environment Control Board, whether it's the Baltimore City Board of Education. And I tell you, colleagues, these are moments where we actually get to learn. So I say that we learn each and every day. So I wasn't familiar with the hearing examiner for the Baltimore City Board of Education. I wasn't also familiar with the Commission on Judicial Disabilities, which is the great thing about serving on 
on executive norms. I think that the title was a little bit misleading, but she was able to educate me in reference to what it is. Not only does she, it, is she being nominated for Commissioner on Judicial Disabilities, but she also has served on judicial nominations. So she's been able to be that important person in the room to make sure that those folks are being put forward are uh, uh, able to represent the state of Maryland in the manner that it deserves. Madam Chair, I could go on and on and on about Ms. Barnes, and I forgot the most important part that I can hear their smile through her phone when she talked about her son. Her son is 22 years of age at this moment. And uh, that was where we quickly made that quick bond from that standpoint. But um, I just hope that the committee would move forward with her uh, nomination as a commission on commission of judicial disabilities. And I say thank you, thank you, thank you for that teachable moment too. Thank you so much to Senator McCray for that very warm introduction. Um, good evening to Madam Chair. Vice Chair and members of the committee. Um, it is an honor to appear before you this evening, um, but I'm probably most proud, as Senator McCray said, to be accompanied by my son, Justin. Um, <laughs> I, can, I, I was sitting here thinking I can remember uh, as a toddler, he would accompany me to some classes at the University of Maryland Law School. So it's, it's an honor for him to appear here with me today. Um, but I'll say that in my nearly 19 years of practicing law in the state of Maryland, I've maintained a passion for the law. I started my practice as a prosecutor in Baltimore City. The majority of my time as a prosecutor, I spent prosecuting sex crime. So I advocated for the most vulnerable victims and citizens of the city of Baltimore. And then I transitioned to civil practice and was eventually elevated to a partner of my firm, um, being the first African-American woman partner at my firm's in its 100 year history. Um, but throughout my 19 years of practice, um, I realized the importance of extending that passion of the law that I have beyond a courtroom and beyond conference rooms. So I've maintained active um, participation in community organizations and bar associations, um, holding some leadership positions and sometimes being the person in the background, just helping out. Um, I realized during my practice a couple of years in, after appearing before many judges throughout the state of Maryland, that that passion of the law extends to making sure we can ensure the integrity and the credibility of the bench. As Senator McCray said, I was a chair of the Maryland State Bar Association's Judicial Appointments Commission, and I look forward to the opportunity of continuing that um, holding accountability to the bench by um, the nomination to the uh, Judicial Disabilities Commission. So I am grateful for the consideration and to Governor Moore. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. Do I have any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. I think your experience previous to this is going to be really important also on judicial disability. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Senator Kagan, are you here? Have I seen Senator Kagan? There she is. I didn't see you in the back. Senator Kagan will be introducing Richard Resnick, Labor Relations, um, the Labor Relations Board. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, colleagues, for the record, Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Gaithersburg and Rockville with someone I've known for more than 30 years. He is a, uh, he's been a labor lawyer for 44 years. You can see his really impressive resume. Uh, you can also see his um, commitment to fairness uh, when he has negotiated contracts, not only is he focused locally and in the state, but he's also done the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority, uh, Disney, and others. So he's been uh, he's he's been working with some high flyers. Um, but I also appreciate his commitment to serve, not just uh, in a Maryland State Board and Commission uh, here, but I first knew him uh, through local politics and on the Traffic and Transportation Commission in Rockville. And for those of you who know about our traffic, you know that's a big and important job. The last thing I'd like to say before introducing you to Mr. Resnick is it's noted in here that this is a uh, filling a vacancy in a six year term. And it looks like he's only gonna get one year. And so since uh, Secretary Edwards is here and her team to the degree that Mr. Resnick is willing to continue to serve. And I know that this is just a short term, but perhaps there'll be an opportunity for him to provide uh, a longer period of service. Uh, with that, I am delighted to present you to Mr. Resnick. Chair Beidel, Vice Chair Hayes, Senate President, members of the committee. Uh, thank you, Senator Kagan. 
for that kind introduction. Uh, I want to thank uh, Governor Moore for his nomination uh, to this board and to uh, ask me for their recommendation to my application. Uh, as Senator Kagan said, I, I've been a, a labor attorney for 44 years. I retired from my firm uh, at the end of 2019. Uh, at that time, I was general counsel of the North America's Building Trades Union, which is a uh, com compendium of uh, all building, 15 building trades unions affiliated with the AFL-CIO. I was also general counsel of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. And in that time, uh, I came to respect and honor the institution of collective bargaining. And I've been honored to deal with employers and unions who respect each other and have been dealt with many joint labor management committees. Uh, my most proud is the Helmets to Hard Hats program, which was uh, developed by both employers and building trades unions to assist uh, transitioning military to find apprenticeship to find apprenticeship opportunities in uh, in the building trades, and it has uh, provided thousands and thousands of uh, transitioning military uh, good job careers that they would not otherwise have. Um, so, with that, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions and thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Rosen. President Ferguson has a question. Thank you. Well, first off, thank you, Mr. Resnick, for your service and being willing to serve and appreciate. It. I know that you were appointed a while ago, and it's good to see you here. Um, asking for the context, we have an important bill that we've been trying to work through around um, the combination of a number of the labor relations boards. Are you serving currently as an interim capacity or only until after appointment? Only until after appointment. After appointment. But I have read that, uh, that bill, and uh, it makes a lot of sense to define uh, collective bargaining better than it is in, in the current uh, legislation. Great. I wasn't sure if you had already, if you'd seen anything or observations of the current existing boards and whether. My, in just looking at decisions uh, that are posted online right. of, this, of the Labor Relations Board, and again, I don't know the facts or, the, or what caused it, but it seems like it just takes too long to get a decision, just right. looking at the, the when something's been filed and when a decision is issued. And if there's something I can do to uh, do that, because justice delayed is justice denied. Certainly. Especially in collective bargaining. Well, thank you. We we'll look forward to your expertise as we move forward here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Resnick. Any other questions? We look forward to your service. Thank, thank you. you. Um, we're back to the Real Estate Commission. Senator Zucker, would you like to introduce Jean Jacques along? Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, for the record, Senator Craig Zucker, uh, proud to present. Uh, J.J. Long. Um, he's got a career in, in mortgages. And one of the things, Madam Chair, that really stuck with me when we were talking is he said he's just in the profession to help people. I said, interesting, Mr. Long, you and I have very similar careers. Uh, but uh, but it's great. It's great to have him here. I think his brother's here as well. So it's uh, it's great to have his, him and his family here. And um, I think he's going to do a great job on this board and uh, proud to present him now, Madam Chair. Yeah. Mr. Long. Thank you very much, Mr. Zucker, uh, Senator Zucker. Uh, good evening, uh, Chair. Madam Chair, good evening, Vice Chair, and uh, good evening, President, good evening, Senators. Uh, my name is Jean-Jacques Elong. Uh, I'm originally from Cameroon, and I came into this country in 1999. Uh, I bought my first house in 2003, and uh, the second one in 2010. So I do know firsthand what does that mean real estate and currently i'm working as a senior mortgage loan originator with homespire mortgage uh, i've been doing this business for a little bit over 22 years nine of which with um homespire mortgage and uh, the 13 others with uh, a retail banking institution chevy chase bank that was later on acquired by capital one bank i love what i do because i mean anyway my job is a People business. You have to love what you do in order for you to allow people to get into a home ownership. 
uh, if you don't provide a very good services to people, they will never come back to you. That's number one. And the other thing is that uh, as complex as the real estate business, you have to make sure that people clearly understand what they're getting into. Because we all know that uh, mortgage is probably, I mean, anyway, the most important element in our lifetime. When I say element, I mean by that investment. So you have to do it right. And people have to make sure that they clearly understand what they're getting into. So I'm seeking a nomination for this committee because I believe that with the experience that I currently have, I will probably provide a lot of feedback to the committee so that we can make the process much easier and very transparent for our clients. So that's why I mean, and I will appreciate your support and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Long. Do I have any questions? Thank you for bringing your, your service and your energy to this board. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Senator Sinor, do you want to introduce Demetrius Scott, number 17? Uh, committee, uh, uh, Senator Charles Sidner for District 44 here, introducing Ms. Uh, Demetria Scott. Uh, and this is my first time meeting Ms. Scott. did not have an opportunity to, to speak to her this weekend. But as you can see from her resume, she is an accomplished real estate professional and would serve well on this particular board. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Ms. Scott. Thank you so very much, Representative. Senator Sidnor. And I'd also like to say thank you so much to Governor Moore for nominating me for this position. I currently serve on the Maryland Real Estate Commission and I am serving as vice chair of the commission. Uh, I have been a member of the Real Estate Commission for six years and I have found it to be both a rewarding uh, volunteer experience as well as a calling. Uh, to shape the minds of educators and to shape the continuing education for real estate licensees across the state. Uh, I have led task forces related to broker supervision, as well as those related to uh, agency and brokerage relationships. I have found it to be a wonderful experience to not only represent Maryland and Baltimore City here in the state, but also on a national level at the Association for Real Estate Law Regulators and Officials. Thank, thank you. you so, so this much. is a, a reappointment for you. Yes, it is. It's thank you for your third service. reappointment, I believe. Okay. Thank you. And do I have any questions for Ms. Scott? Thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Um, Senator Augustine, would you like to introduce Mia Pittman for the Retirement and Pension Systems Board of Trustees? Good afternoon, um, Senator Malcolm Augustine here um, to present Mia Pittman um, for a member of the Board of Trustees for the State Retirement and Pension System. Colleagues, this is a big job. I mean, our state um, retirement and pension system is obviously very important, significant, as so many of you all know. And what I will say is... Um, Ms. Pittman reached out to me and said, I'm the person for the job. She, in fact, did do that. And it, colleagues, I got to tell you, that she, as she's one of my neighbors, she really does have just tremendous qualifications for this position. She's got 30 years of experience in banking and finance, including 13 years in risk management leadership. She's a chief risk officer for the Federal Housing Administration with the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, where she has operational and credit risk oversight of FHA's $1.4 trillion of mortgage insurance portfolio to include the uh, single family uh, mortgage loans and 200 billion multifamily housing and healthcare residential uh, facility lines of business. Her experience is extensive, as I mentioned earlier. She uh, got her undergrad uh, degree from the University of Pennsylvania her MBA from Temple, a master's from um, George Washington. I am 100% believe that she will be an unbelievable asset for this board and I fully support her. And here she is to talk to you all. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> Madam Chair, 
Vice Chairman Hayes, President Ferguson, and the distinguished members of this committee. Um, my name is Mia Pittman, and I want to thank you for having me today as you consider my nomination to the Maryland State Retirement and Pension System Board of Trustees. With the prominent support of Senator Augustine, I am honored to have received Governor Moore's recommendation for this civic responsibility of considerable importance. And I hope that our time today will affirm your belief in my appropriateness for the role. I strongly believe that my professional journey to this point makes me distinctly qualified to serve as a member of the SRPS Board of Trustees. As mentioned, I've spent the last 30 years in the financial services industry, beginning as a small business loan officer in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, through into my current role as Chief Risk Officer for the Federal Housing Administration, where, as mentioned, I lead credit and operational risk management oversight for the $1.4 trillion FHA portfolio. Along the way, I have earned numerous academic and professional credentials germane to financial services, including as a CFA charter holder, the credential that is held by most members of the investment management field. Additionally, the latter half of my career has centered around the appropriate governance of organizational risk and the role that members of boards of directors play in that function, particularly in the highly regulated banking industry. In the position immediately prior to my role as CRO for FHA, I led an internal audit function for a $3 billion financial institution with direct reporting and accountability to the board audit committee. It is through this experience that I developed my approach to the board's role in balancing its twin objectives, that of strategic growth and managing risk as they carry out their fiduciary obligations to the stakeholders whose interests they represent. To that end, I would conclude my remarks by making the point that I am extraordinarily clear to whom I will always be ultimately accountable. My role as trustee is to ensure the ju judicious management of pension resources for the over 412,000 members of the state retirement and pension system. From the teachers in Garrett County at the farthest Northwest to the law enforcement personnel in Somerset, Wacomico and Worcester counties at the farthest north Southeast and all of the state employees in between, including in my own Prince George's County. My obligation and loyalty will always be to the retirees residing in the 24 jurisdictions across this great state of Maryland. I thank you for your time this evening, and I do welcome your questions. Thank you, Ms. Pittman. Do I have any questions for Ms. Pittman? I feel better knowing that you're there helping to manage our pensions. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Senator Lamb, would you like to introduce Michelle Rhodes Brown? All right, thank you, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, for the record, Clarence Lamb, Senator District 12. I'm really pleased to be here to be able to introduce Michelle Rhodes Brown for the Board of Trustees for the State Retirement and Pension Systems. Um, Ms. Rhodes Brown has had significant experience in finance that will help with the state retirement system in meeting its financial and fiduciary obligations. She has an MBA from Northwestern University and has also served in a variety of high level finance roles, including at Deloitte. Holland Capital Management, and most recently as the Chief Financial Officer for the Walters Art Museum. Her extensive experience will help ensure that Maryland State employees and retirees can rely on a solvent pension system for years to come. And with that, it's a real honor to be able to introduce to all of you Ms. Michelle Rhodes Brown. Thank you. I first want to thank Governor, the Governor Westmore for having the faith in me to nominate me for this Pension and Retirement Board. I want to thank Senator Lamb for that gracious introduction. I also want to thank the committee for allocating the time. I know you all are really busy to consider this. And, and lastly, I want to introduce my super supportive husband who's here, Dr. Milpa Brown, who's joined me um, this afternoon. We moved to Maryland from Chicago with our two children almost 15 years ago. I accepted a position as the senior vice president at a minority owned asset management firm where we invested the pension assets of many state retirement funds, including the one here in Maryland. We live in Columbia where I serve on the Howard County Pension Oversight Commission. I stand here as the CFO of the Walters Art Museum where I helped to oversee the 457B plan set up for our employees. With over three decades of investment experience and almost 20 years 
of serving as a financial professional for multiple nonprofit organizations, it would be my honor to serve on this committee in support of the many Maryland State employees. Do you have any questions? Do any senators have questions of Ms. Rhodes Brown? Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute, Senator Augustine. It's it says here. Um, can you just tell me about Delta Sigma Theta? <laughs> <laughs> what an awesome passing question. I am a member of Delta Sigma Theta oh. Sorority. Okay. We are a <laughs> national public service organization, at which point I served as the chair of the National Finance Committee um, in, in orchestrating the finances for the national organization as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, our last nominee for tonight is um, Senator Hellman. I'm sorry, you had to wait till the end, but um, Mr. Lee Copeland, who is being nominated for the State Authority Board. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. President, members of the committee. And my name is Shelley Hedelman, District 11 Senator. I'm really pleased today to introduce you to Lee Copeland. Um, Lee is a founding member of the architecture firm Howard Copeland and & Moth, and he is its CEO. The firm was founded in 1977 and has grown to become the largest architecture firm headquartered in Maryland with a national practice focused on healthcare, housing, and education. His practice specifically is focused on the healthcare sector, and he's been the principal in charge for many, many projects in many of our districts, the medical facility design, such as Sinai, Northwest Hospital, Mount Washington Pediatric Center, University of Maryland Health Systems, Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, et cetera. He was inducted into the American Institute of Architects College of Fellows in 2020. He is in his both professional and personal life. He's focused his attention on diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, including working with deans of architectural schools at HBCUs and other universities to expand opportunities for minorities and women in architecture. Architecture. Under his leadership, the firm has created a scholarship fund at the School of Architecture and Planning at Morgan, created DEI efforts at his own firm, and mem mem mentorship opportunities along with the AIA. In his philanthropic work, Lee is on the board of LifeBridge Health. Um, he has uh, leadership roles at UMBC and Stevenson University. He is the president of the Camp Airy and Louise Foundation, as well as on the board of directors of the Aaron Strauss and Lily Strauss Foundation. And if you'll indulge me, you don't even know what I'm going to say. Um, I just want to share a little personal story. Um, he is, as I said, the president of the board of the Camp Airy and Camp Louise Foundation. And this past summer, they, the camp, Camp uh, Airy was, uh, had a horrible, horrible fire um, in the middle of the summer. And I got many of my constituents and their children to, it's an overnight camp in um, Catoctin Mountains in Western Maryland. And my daughter happened to be working there this summer at the very time when this fire struck. And I got a, a, a text with a photo of an enormous building up in flames and had gotten some calls from some of my constituents. And I called a family member of his who I know better than I know Mr. Copeland, who um, reassured me and told me that Lee was on his way in the car on his way there. So I just want to share that personal story. It demonstrates his character and sense of responsibility um, and commitment to the community. So no hesitation in, in the um, in recommending Mr. Lee Copeland for the very important uh, position of Maryland Stadium Authority. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Hedelman. Yeah, that was an interesting day. Um, I got a lot of calls from parents that day of the fire at Camp Berry, and uh, the most common message I got was, please don't send my kids home. <laughs> Make sure you figure out a way to keep them. Um, thank you, Chair, Chair Bidal. Vice Chair Hayes, President Ferguson, and members of the committee. It's an honor to be here and an honor to be nominated for this important position as a board member of the Maryland Stadium Authority. Thank you, Governor Moore and Secretary Edward Edwards for your trust. The MSA plays a critical role in the development and management of properties and programs that drive economic development and energize communities throughout the state of Maryland. In my 46 years of practicing architecture, you probably heard all of this from Shelley, but I'll have to say it again, because it's written here. 
I have been involved in the design of all types of projects from healthcare, education, both K through 12 and higher ed, sports venues, as well as development of neighborhoods that stabilize and enhance the communities around professional sports venues, including housing, commercial, and entertainment districts. As an architect, I've been intimately involved with contractors of these buildings, as well as advising clients on various forms of procurement strategies, including design build and public-private partnerships. In addition, as CEO of my firm, I have provided leadership in all matters required to run a significant size business, financial, business development, human resources, and risk management. I began my firm with two other partners, Carol Mock and Ed Hoard in 1977, and as its CEO with continued entrepreneurial spirit, have grown the company to its current state of 340 employees. And as Shelley mentioned, ranked number one in Maryland and 42nd in the country. I will be retiring from my firm at the end of the month, that's soon, and look forward to new and exciting experiences and challenges. In addition, I have had decades of service on volunteer boards in support of the health and well being of the underserved in our state these commitments to serve will continue. If I am fortunate enough to be confirmed, I look forward to bringing those experiences and perspectives in support of the mission of the Stadium Authority and in its advancement of Governor Moore's vision for the state. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to any questions you might have. Do I have any questions for Mr. Copeland? I have a question or two, and thank you for reaching out to my office. We had a little bit of a busy day on Friday, so I wasn't able to get back to you. But um, you have an amazing resume, and I know a lot of these projects that I know that you or your firm have worked on. But I just wonder, as a member of the Stadium Authority, do you see having any conflicts? Uh, the only, um, I'll be retiring, um, so I don't have any firm conflicts. Uh, the only conflict that may exist um, is in my position as a, as a board member of LifeBridge. And because we share a property line with uh, Pimlico Racetrack. Um, I think we both have the same um, goals there, which is to keep the race in Baltimore and to uh, stabilize uh, that, that part of the community. Thank but you that for would that. be the only thing I could think. Thank you for that answer. Um, Senator Croza. Um, thank you. And I really appreciate knowing your extensive leadership background as a CEO. And also, it, it, it is of interest that uh, you mentioned your retirement, not only from the standpoint of, you know, conflicts of interest, but uh, from what I understand, the workload of the members of the Maryland Stadium Authority. And um, just as we go through this process, um, and since you do have an extensive background in a lot of different areas, um, is there are there any past financial challenges that this committee should be made aware of? Uh, no, there are not. Senator McKay. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a very important question. Finally, I got to meet the man who designed the Western Maryland health system. And on the second floor, I have a hard time finding the men's room. So if you and I could talk offline, you could draw me a map later, please. I, Thank I you, will, sir. I will check the drawings and send you a map. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very nice to meet you and look nice forward to working here. Thank you. you all very much. Our last nominee for the night, and just a minute, I think we'll have a motion. Do you? Oh, yeah. oh. ready for the motion? I guess it's not okay. Y'all ready? All right. Thanks, Madam. All right. Madam Chair, I move that we move favorable on numbers one through 21, all state and local nominees with these exceptions. Listen clearly committee. These are the exceptions. On page six, S11, S12, and S13. S11, S12, and S13. All three of them can be found on page six. Also, with the exceptions of L11, L12, and L13, they can be found on page 12. That's L11, L12, and L13 on page 12. 
these clusters of nominations has some clerical errors that we'll look into. And then also lastly on page eight, excuse me, S27 is at the request of a member. So again, S11, S12, S13, L11, L12, L13, and S27 are the exceptions. Did I hear a second? We have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion that's made by the vice chair? Any, any opposition? Thank you all. You have